Am I supposed to mic around there? Uh, no, no, I'm just fine. Just, wait, just leave it off. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Unplug it there. Alright. Have any uh, sincere questions about the Christian faith? Now, young lady, that uh, scenario that you were describing, we hear often in the open air when we're preaching, oh, this hypocrite or that hypocrite is why I don't believe Jesus, why I don't obey God. Well, you can't blame them on Judgment Day. You won't be able to blame that wicked hypocrite pastor okay, for the wicked things that he did to you. Now, we do empathize with you. I, 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 uh, you know, I have compassion about that. I don't want you to think we're not, uh, we don't have some kind of empathy for that. We do. But uh, the truth of the matter is, as Kerrigan told you, you're still going to be responsible for the way you're living. If you harden your heart against God now, uh, of course, He'll have a greater judgment, but you'll have a judgment as well. And any judgment under the, the awesome hand of God Almighty will be uh, horrible. He's promised it. God, Jesus Christ Himself, has promised fire for the sinners. So I would exhort you to be born again of the Holy Spirit and begin to live as Christ has commanded us to live. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 6, it says, You ought to walk just as He walked, that is Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ walked perfectly. None of us have done that. All of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And that's why we need the Savior's blood to atone for us, to, to be a remission, to, to have our sins wiped out. Uh, and now we can be forgiven and become a child of God. You don't have that. You need to seek Him. You know, seek well, the way you're talking. That's how we know any, any sinner is, is a sinner is because what comes forth from the heart. Jesus Christ said, uh, the issues of life come forth from the heart. So when you say, when you promote things that are contradictory to the Bible, then, then we have to say that you're not being a Christian, you're not believing. You honestly stand there and tell me that I don't have a right to stand there and have some type of fear or phobia of pastors when I went through a very traumatizing experience for over 10 years with one. Well, now hang on That's a second. Again, you're, you're straw manning what I said. That's not what I said. I never said any of that stuff you just said. What I said was you're responsible for your sin, I never not your ex-husband's sin. No, you're responsible for the way you're living. I never and you professed up here a few minutes ago. Uh, hang on, I'll take your point in a minute. Yeah. Let me finish making mine if you'll listen to it. You professed a few moments ago that if you walked down the street and you saw a young man and you looked after him and you thought he was cute, uh, then, and, and Gary said, well, that may not be sin, but you're walking on the border. Then you went on to say, well, I sexually desire him. That is lust. And Jesus condemned it. And so as a Christian walking by faith, we are given the power by the Holy Spirit, by seeking God, to overcome sin, to uh, be above sin, to, to resist the temptations that the devil presents to our hearts and minds and eyes. He said, no, I'm not going to do that. Lord Jesus, help me. And he does every time. The Bible says that God will give us a way of escape. But you have to have, by faith, you have to step out the way he's walking. But don't you agree that we all sin even if we, every day, even if we don't No, I don't agree with that at all. It's not what the Bible tells us to do. So you're basically just sinless. Every no, day. the Bible commands us to be obedient, which would be sinless. To be obedient is to be without sin. Now, I still could sin. I have a free will. I have a free will, but I choose daily to resist the devil, to seek the Lord, to seek his word and his will for my life. And if I'm tempted, why are you interrupting what I'm saying? I'm almost done. So if I'm tempted, I seek God to overcome the temptation. And guess what? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, Philippians 4.13. So how do you know that I don't do that? Just because I well, because what you profess. To sin? Because you profess. If I do this, you am just, I going to hell? You just admitted. Are you doing that? Okay. You just admitted to me that there are times that you may sin, but does that give you the right to say no, that no, you're no. not, that no, you no. need to That's not what I admitted. What I admit is there are times I could sin. Funny? I'm not saying I did sin. I could be tempted, well, and I can resist temptation. I could sin, and there are times where I could, Jesus, you know, resist temptation. But that does, I mean, you, you're, you're taking my words, and you're turning them into something that I didn't say. I'm not trying to stumble you, young lady. I'm trying to point you to the truth. 
The truth is, Jesus Christ has a narrow way that Christians are expected to walk daily. He said, pick up your cross daily and follow me. Not follow the world. It's a narrow way that leads to life. Now, I'm going to give you a few verses and ask you to respond to that, please. What's your name again? Jennifer. My name is John. Now, Jennifer, listen carefully. 1 Peter chapter 1. You're professing to be a Christian, is that right? 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 14 and 15 says this, As obedient children... Not conforming yourself to your former lust, be you holy in all your conduct. Now, when you start conducting yourself in a holy manner, though I can't watch that, I can't listen to that, I can't look at that, I want to please Jesus. Oh yeah, Jesus, you told me to go be a witness. So you go start out there, and you start talking to sinners. Sinners, listen, you need to turn from your sin and love Jesus. And the sinners turn on you and say, why are you being so hateful to us? When Jesus Christ said, in John 7, 7, the whole world hates me because I testify of it that its works are wicked. And now he commands Christians that are born again of the Holy Spirit to go therefore in the whole world, everybody you see, everybody you can, you tell them about me. You tell them about my love and grace and mercy towards them while they were yet criminals, I died for them. And then also, don't forget, tell them to turn from their sin which separates me from them. And so if you're not obeying those things, you're not being a Christian. All right. To be a Christian is to follow Jesus Christ, period. So let me make sure I got this right. And please don't tell me I'm strong arming you or I'm putting words in your mouth. No, no, no. We I never said strong. We said straw man. Whatever not it strong is. arm. Okay. Straw Didn't man. Did you ask me not to interrupt you? Yes, I'm just okay. clarifying. Thank you. Because that's what I was doing. But please don't. Um, so basically what you're saying is that I'm not a Christian because I don't do this. Well, you might not be an open-air preacher. I, I can speak now. Yes. You might not be an open-air preacher, but you will be a witness. A witness must speak of the testator, that is Jesus Christ, the one who died for all sinners. And the witness must also speak against the criminal. These are judicial terms now. Because there's a judgment day coming in which the testator will judge the world in righteousness, and the testator will give an account to every person. Now, as a Christian following Christ, if you actually believe that most people are going to exist in a conscience knowing torment in everlasting fire forever and you never open your mouth to say and to warn them about that then you neither love christ nor your neighbor so basically if i am witnessing through my Christ-like behavior, that's not good enough i have to stand on a corner like you and no you know you know better than the the buddhist the Buddhist is, appears to be good. The Muslim has an appearance. The religious people, the Baptists, the Roman Catholics have an appearance to be good. But my goodness, the foundation of my goodness, all of our goodness is Christ Jesus. And from that, flowing from that living water, from Him, I obey Him and I testify of the goodness of well, God I apologize. and the unrighteous. According to your, your speeches, I'm just not a Christian. I apologize. Well, I, the Bible, I'm young lady, the Bible tells you. us to examine ourselves. I'm not saying you've never been a Christian. I'm saying at this point right now, you're 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 on shaky sand. And that's, you're on shaky that's, ground. That's between me and God. But how no, you, it's not. It's but public. How are you? Jesus died publicly. I'm here to warn you of the truths of the Bible. See, most people in this campus aren't willing to warn anyone. They're not willing to tell the truths about sin at all. They're not willing to tell the truths about sin at all. But I am. See, I, I will be bold enough to step forth, and if you profess a sin, no, 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 I'm going to say, listen, your sin separates you from God. Do you believe that, Jennifer? Can I ask you a question? Uh, I, I'm going to get done with Jennifer, and I'll take your question <laughs> next. Okay? Jennifer, do you believe sin separates people from God? Yes, I do. Do you believe the Holy Spirit continues to indwell a believer while they're actively, knowingly, willingly sinning? How, how could it be holy, then? You're if that Holy Spirit is residing in the believer, which but you are, because Jesus Christ dwells within you, He doesn't just leave your body; He's always there. How do you suppose that? Because so Jesus Christ has now become a sinner, dwelling inside a sinful temple. No, He's always yes. there. He's no, always no, 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 no. That's what you're so supposing. You're telling me that when I sin, He just escapes my body, and I'm just. We don't escape. He's grieved. The Holy Spirit is grieved away from the sinner. When a Christian who professes Christ now begins to willingly, knowingly, willfully sin against God and the Holy Spirit that lives within him or her, then the Holy Spirit leaves because the Holy Spirit's grieved by sin. And now 
you, you, you're uh, in great danger of judgment. Jennifer, are you listening to the warning? Go ahead, young lady. Uh, it won't be funny on Judgment Day. No, it won't. You're right. It won't be. It's a very serious, very sober thing. It is. Are you married, sir? Yes, ma'am. Uh, are you saying that you're not a sinner? No, I was a sinner in that sense. You I have sinned. So are you saying when you met your wife, when you first saw her, uh -huh. did you lust after her? No, I, I did desire her. You desired her. So... I thought she was a very beautiful person, and she was godly and meek and quiet, and I thought, wow, Lord. That's not what I asked. Did you lust after her? Did I, did, I told you, I did not lust after her. You desired her, right? You desired I did not desire her sexually. But you said you still desired her. I did not desire her sexually in a perverted manner. Lust is a sexual perversion. There's a difference. A big difference. I wasn't looking at her at her I wasn't looking at her toilet cushion saying, Wow, those are some great toilet cushions. I wasn't looking at her baby bottle saying, Wow, look at those baby bottles. I want to get with that chick. That's wicked. That's filthy. See, that's what perversion does. See, perversion changes good things that God has made into something that's not good. Um we have a question. Go ahead. What is the plan for salvation? Are you a Christian? Yes, I am. Then you know. Do you have anything else, well, no, young lady? No, we were sir, I'm asking was so it? you can tell them, so not, for tell, not for me. Not for me. Oh, we've asking. already told them the plan of salvation over and over and over, and over again. I see a lot of people that just came in over you here. You got your Bible? I wasn't trying to be funny. You got your Bible? Asking, huh? You got your Bible? My Bible? No, yes. it's in the car. Second Corinthians 7.10, Paul writing to the Corinthians said, For godly sorrow... Uh -huh leads to repentance to salvation not to be regretted but the sorrow of the world leads to destruction that would be in hell and many people have a sorry God da, 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 sorry God dude sorry God wow see that's a that's a worldly sorrow that's going to lead them to destruction because they dance while they're dirty dancing and getting drunk they're dancing in the blood of the Savior whom they say is their Lord which is a lie because if he was their Lord, they would submit and humble themselves and do whatever they, whatever he said. I, I wasn't asking to be funny or disrespectful. I just That's wanted, fine. I just I gave just you a plan of salvation, though. Godly sorrow leads to repentance to salvation. Psalm 34 says, God saves such as be a broken and contrite spirit. Now, when I got saved 15 years ago, I was, <clears throat> the Holy Spirit was convicting my soul about my sin. And, and convicting my soul about what Jesus did for me on the cross. I couldn't even think about it. It was driving me crazy. For eight <coughs> months, I go, what am I supposed to do? I tried to clean up my act. I got this out of my life. Got that. No, no, no. Holy Spirit, no, no, that's not it. I try again. That You're still not clean. Try again. <laughs> I'm doing all these things to try to get right with God. But the one thing that I neglected was a godly sorrow about what Jesus did for me on the cross. And every sinner must have that same sorrow. That's it. Oh, Lord Jesus, you died for me, for my wickedness. They wouldn't laugh about it. They wouldn't mock it. They would actually be sober about it. Please forgive me, God. I, I shouldn't have done those things. And they confess all their sin to Him. And they're born again of the Holy Spirit. Now the Holy Spirit lives in them. They don't want to grieve the Spirit. They want to live this narrow way that leads to life. Amen. Hallelujah. That makes sense? The plan of salvation is for the sinner to recognize they they violated God's commands. Amen and that they need to humble themselves and confess that sin to God and receive the Lord Jesus Christ with gladness as their Lord and Savior. Not just their Savior, not just their fire insurance, but their Lord, He's in charge, He's the most important person in the universe, amen? But Jesus Christ said, if you love your mother more than me, you have no part in me. So now Jesus, who is the person of all persons, He's the creator of all the universe, He's the one we supremely love, I don't care what any man says. He's the one we're supposed to love. And so, by doing that, by having this brokenness about the, the great mercy and love that He demonstrated for each of us at the cross, now that compels me to my knees, compels me to, to yes, Lord, yes, Lord, what do, you, what do you want me to do? And then I go do it. And God does not desire that we sin. The Bible says over and over again, and only a few people of all the Christians on this campus actually agree with that. They don't actually believe in holiness, they believe in well, Jesus forgave us. He loves us no matter what. No. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says, you must be holy. That's right. 
you must love God back. Amen. The question is not, has God loved us? I think most even unbelievers will say that. Well, I believe God loved me. But they'll, they'll go on and say, I, I don't think He'll judge me now. That's what they say. That's not what His Word promises. It's not what Jesus promised. So, in order to love God back, that's the point I was trying to make, we obey Him. We obey Him. Jesus Christ said in John 14, 15, If you love me, you will obey my commandments. And you know what the rebels in this world? They don't want to hear anything about humility. They don't want to hear anything about obedience and respect and anything like that. Because they are completely uh, turned over to their sin. They love their sin more than my Savior. So, our Savior. So, here's the, here's the point. The point is, obedience to the gospel brings forth righteousness. Brings forth fruit, good fruit, meat for repentance. So, what, the question then becomes, what is the gospel? What do you mean by that? Most people say it's good news, and I agree it is very good news that a sinner like me, a wretch like me, can be saved from such a, a wicked uh, lifestyle I was living, a wicked condition I was in, under God's wrath and under God's judgment. You follow what I'm saying? <clears throat> so here, here's the point. The point is now God has loved me at the cross. I responded to that, and I was born again in the Holy Spirit. I got up off at two, two hours, two, three hours, on my, I don't even know how long it was. On my face before God, August 1st, 1996, I got up, all that weight of all that sin was gone. Oh, I was filled with the joy of the Spirit. Hallelujah, I knew I was forgiven. I knew before I read the verse, I knew that the Father was pleased. And all heaven was rejoicing when one sinner repented. This sinner right here. I re repented and now I want to be faithful to God. Now I want to be obedient to God. Now I want to be a saint of God. What does that mean? The Bible says the saints in Ephesus, the saints in Colossae, the saints in Corinth, the saints in Rome. The Bible says over and over again talking to the believers, saints, sanctified, holy ones. That's all it means that we want to please God. We're willing to forsake anything, even unto bloodshed, for His glory, for His name. Hallelujah. Amen. As the Lord leads us. You agree? All right. I didn't come to preach the righteous, though. No, yeah. I just wanted to um, ask you, what do you, you want to ask? Go ahead. Um, what do you um, get from Acts 38? Like, um, what do you get from baptized, the baptism and all that? Are you from Church of Christ? Am I? Church of Christ? Yeah. Uh, Church of Christ I, I, background? No. No? Just ask. Well, she, she does. I used, to, I used to attend the Church of Christ. Used to be? Okay. Well, <laughs> I think uh, Acts 2, 30, 38, we should, we should do that. But if a person dies on the way to the baptism, where do they go? Um, well, born again in water and spirit, that depends on what you believe. In. Yeah, if I go back to John chapter 3, born again in water and spirit, I can say, well, I believe that that's born again of a woman, natural birth versus a supernatural rebirth. That's one view of it. I would kind of hold to that well, view. That's why I remember um, when I'm looking at the he was like, um, I, I know you're trying to hurt your picture. Right. So I'm not going to take up too much of your time. But you remember when Nicodemus, he was like, um, can a man, how can a man be born again? He was old, he went to the second time. Right. Was, and Jesus was like, no, um, unless a man be born again, a water and stand up spirit, he's going to have a church in heaven. And, um, I right, but, but that's supposing that water comes after the new birth. That's making that supposition. Mm -hmm. Jesus could have just been talking to me, talking about the natural birth and the new birth at the same time in the same sentence. In, in the same sentence, he could have been talking about the natural and supernatural at the same time. I understand how you can make that leap. I do understand that. But we're saved by faith. You agree with that? I do. So in faith, faith in Christ. So we look at the man uh, that was crucified on the cross next to him. He wasn't baptized. But he, Jesus didn't die yet. He said we're buried with him. So he didn't die yet. So you think he got baptized between there and... No, the... no, he didn't need to. Jesus didn't die. The reason we get baptized is to... Uh, oh, I see what you're saying, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, um, I've heard that argument as well. I just don't accept it. Now, Cornelius in Acts chapter 10, you explain that. Cornelius, you mean the one that uh, Peter was sent to our sister, was sent to Peter? Uh, say it again. You were talking about the man that was sent to Peter, what they had... Cornelius. Peter, Peter sent to Cornelius, yes, the, yeah. the soldier. Yeah, he so, in Acts chapter 10, he said... He said, uh, these are being saved like we're, we were saved. Mm -hmm. You know, tongues of fire, the Holy Spirit's mm -hmm. come upon them. Right. What prevents them from being baptized? Right. So, but he said before that point, he said, they're being saved like we're being saved. They would, yeah. But he said, if, if you know, he who believeth and is baptized, shall be saved. He didn't say just believe. He said, you must be baptized. Well, that's I think, I Acts 2.38. I agree with that. Right. I don't yeah. think he made it none of faith. I think it's all actually, it, 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 it's a whole thing. I think 
So I come back to the question again, if a person doesn't make it to the baptismal, are they unsaved? Well, it makes sense if you're not born again of water and the Spirit, you can't enter into the kingdom. No, it, it only makes, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make logical sense, okay? Well, Jesus is not logic, and it does, actually. It does. <laughs> no, God is logic. You know, he's the author of, lo of logistics here, or uh, uh, logic. God is the author of logic. <laughs> Jesus said, love God with all your heart and mind, strength and soul. Now, did you get one of my cards? Yes, I did. No, she did, yes. but, but did you? I, no. Come on in, that's fine. I'll okay. reach you. <laughs> take one of these, email me, and we'll talk about this more. i got a whole okay. teaching on it, okay? All right, I really don't want to burn up any more, more time because I, I do have people here I want to preach okay. to. All right. And you believe in that, the resurrection of Christ Jesus, you yes. believe in that. Yes. You believe in the rebirth of a believer, yes. the rebirth of a person into belief, and right? I believe in that. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, amen. All right. So, God has commanded all men everywhere to repent. Acts chapter 17, verse 30. And what does that word repent mean? It means to confess your sin and, and turn from it, actually turning from it. Not just saying, I'm sorry, God, but, but imposing or, or uh, intending in your heart never to do it again. Never to do that sin again. The, the greatest sin that anybody has is rejecting Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. So to reject Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior means that His sacrifice for you, for your sin, on the cross is of no effect for you. In fact, it brings great judgment because when you understand it and you reject it, you're saying, you know, God, I don't care if you sent your Son as a blood sacrifice for my sin. I got my life. I'm doing it my way. As a Frank Sinatra used to sing. You guys remember Frank Sinatra? He's dead now. And Frank did it his way his whole life. And Frank is probably in hell right now, crying out, please go tell them not to come to this place. Jesus Christ said in Matthew 7, 13 and 14, wide is the road to hell, most go that way. Narrow is the way, leads to life, and few find it. So if you find the narrow way, it leads to life. And that narrow way, the narrow gate is Christ Jesus. The narrow way is walking out of life in holy obedience to God's commands. Obeying God. That's the call to you students today. Obey God. Come to the kingdom of God. Don't mock it. Jesus Christ loves you. If you loved Him back, obey Him. I call you the kingdom of Christ. The kingdom of God is near to you. I call you to repentance and faith and trust in Jesus. This is the call of the preacher to the sinner. Will you obey it? Will you obey the command of God and the pleading of the preacher? I beg you, I plead with you on Christ's behalf. Be born again of the Holy Spirit. Confess and forsake your sin. Trust Christ as both your Lord and Savior. God is coming, and He's coming to judge the world in righteousness. He's coming in a day the whole universe will flee from His face. In Revelation, it describes Jesus on the judgment throne, eyes of fire, hair white as wool, feet as burnished brass fire. Have you ever seen brass on fire? It's very hot. So Jesus' feet will be fiery hot. And then he will put his enemies under his feet, the Bible says. And I was thinking about this, uh, this the other day, wondering, you know, in hell, are they just at the feet of Jesus? Jesus is so great and so mighty as hell, just uh, Jesus' feet. That's where the sinners are. They're forced to be there, under his feet. But Jesus Christ described hell as fire everlasting fire that's never put out never quenched and if I believe that as a Christian for me not to come and try and warn you about that everlasting fire is to not love God not love you everlasting torment Jesus described and taught about where a worm does not die there's a worm there for you or for everyone I don't know but it's, it can't be good a worm that's in the fire with you I don't know what that worm is doing, but the, the Jesus said the worm does not die. The worm goes in your ear, comes out your eye, I don't know. It, and Psalm 917 says this, the wicked will be turned into hell. You'll actually become part of it. You know, when you throw a log on the fire, there's lots of glowing orange embers there. 
You throw the log on there, initially it's not part of the fire yet. But soon it becomes part of that fiery inferno. And that's what the sinner becomes, part of that fire. You become part of that justice. There's no party there. Don't let the devil lie to you. There's no party in hell. There's only pain and torment, and regret, gloom and doom forever and ever and ever. This is serious. It's a very sober thing. Do you ever consider your life before a holy and righteous God? Now, I'm surprised, you know, even today some people are saying, well, God, God's not going to judge us. You can't judge us and God's not going to judge us. That, that's wicked. They lie about God. They lie about what He said. And they say, oh, God's not, there's no judgment day. Don't worry about that. Liars. There's a big judgment day. Big fire, big bonfire starting for the sinners. And the Bible says that hell opens its mouth wider and wider to receive more sinners. And if your parents did not lead you in the Christian faith, I would suppose some of you, they led you in that faith and you've rejected it now. But many of you, if your parents did not lead you to Christ as a child growing up into a young adult, then they have a greater judgment than you. Because they knew what to do and they didn't do it. They didn't lead you to holiness. They didn't lead you to salvation. And God is going to judge their life. And the wicked fruit that is your life hanging off their life. You know, wicked children are wicked fruit of wicked people. So you promote sin. You promote uh, homosexuality. You promote drug use. You promote all these wicked, filthy things that God abhors and God hates. But yeah. uh, guess what? You're going to hell. Your parents? What about your grandparents? Did your grandparents try and lead you to the king? Did your grandparents try and lead you to Jesus Christ? If they didn't and they died in their sin, then guess what? They're in hell right now crying out, please don't come to this place. It's torment. Now Jesus Christ related a story of a rich man and Lazarus in which the rich man died and went to hell. He went to Hades, in the lower compartment of Hades in which there's fire. He's on fire in torment. And he, he asked uh, Father Abraham, please send Lazarus back. Oh, he says, you, you can't go back. They won't believe the law and the prophets. They'll neither will believe somebody coming back from the dead. They won't believe somebody coming back from the dead. If Lazarus were to go back from the dead and tell his brothers, his five brothers, they would not believe him. I don't believe Lazarus, sorry. I know you died, but I don't care. I don't believe. Well, even if your grandparents and great-grandparents came back to life and came and told you there's a place of fire. Don't go, you repent. No, no, no. Guess what? It hasn't taken away your free will to obey or disobey. Obedience! God requires obedience to the gospel. He requires you to, to relent of your sin, repent of your sin, and turn back to Him and love Him and obey Him forever. There are people, multitudes and multitudes of millions <coughs> and upon millions, I don't know how many multitudes of people that are in hell right now screaming out in torment, please don't come to this place. And there are very few watchmen on the wall warning you about that place, warning you about your sin separates you from God, warning you about the truth of God's justice. I plead with you to consider Christ who's offering you mercy. Even today, Christ offers you mercy at the cross. Christ offers you mercy in a humble response to His love for you. Jesus Christ loved you! Love Him back! Jesus Christ loved you! Will you love Him back? God is coming in a day which no man knows. You don't know He's going to show up. He's going to surprise you like a thief in the night. He'll surprise you. I'm not ready. Judgment day. It's too late. Or if you die before He returns. The Bible says in Hebrews 9.27, It is appointed once to die and then judgment. It is appointed once to die. You young people have had a short life. You might think you're innocent. 
but you're old enough to know better. And then judgment. You'll be judged. And one sin, one lie is enough to separate you from a holy God. Jesus Christ said, liars, go to the fire. Well, God loves it. Why are you running away, you coward? Don't run away, coward. If you have the truth, come back and defend the truth. But I have the truth. Jesus Christ, hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. He's the way out of this circumstance. And we all find ourselves in. We all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And the payment for your sin job, the wages of sin, is death. Death. The second death, hell. Fire forever and ever. Worm does not die. Fire is not put out. Please, I beg you not to go there. I implore you on Christ's behalf, get right, be reconciled to the Savior, to God Almighty. Won't be funny on Judgment Day, sir. It's hilarious. Oh, won't be hilarious that day. Man, I practice Very sober thing. Very, very sober thing. Won't be hilarious on that day. But God is commanding you sinners to turn from your sin. I beg you, but He's commanding. God commands you to turn from your fornication. Fornicators, those that are having sex outside of marriage will not inherit the kingdom of God. If you're having any type of sex, it's a perversion. Whether it's homosexual activity, heterosexual, bisexual, <laughs> autosexual, whatever it might be. <coughs> you don't know what autosexuality is? You do? You're a college student, right? Oh, okay. Say again? I'm sorry, I can't understand what you're saying. But do you have ears to hear what Christ has said? Do you have ears to hear the truth about Jesus Christ today? You humble yourself. Seek Him. Pray. Cry out to Him. A broken heart about your sin that separates you from God. Sin is a breaking of God's law. Lying, stealing, murder. These things God hates. God hates sin. God is just. In Him is no darkness at all. God is love. He's expressed that love for each of you at the cross. Right? Have you loved Him back? Have you loved Him back? Have you loved Jesus back? Have you obeyed the gospel? Where are you going? I got class. You know, just the term destination. The root being destiny. You start in one place, start in point A, you're born. Point B, uh, point B, you die. Point C, where are you? A, B, C's. When you die, if you die without Christ, if you die in your sin, answer for C is fire. Now if, you, if you're in Christ, you'll be with Christ. You're in Christ, you'll be in His provision. You'll be in paradise. God will care for you for eternity. But only for the children of God. If the children of the devil, they'll be in torment. They're in torment right now. The ones that have died before you. Go look at all those graves. 85, 90% of them. All those people are represented by those stones. They are in torment right now. I'm sure of it. If this population in our country is any, any indicator, when I, when I talk to people, 9 out of 10 people know nothing about the Christian faith. They don't know how to describe the gospel. They don't know what the truth of Jesus Christ is. They don't know anything about holiness and the narrow way that leads to life. 90 to 95% of them. And so that leads me to believe that when Jesus Christ says most will go to the fire, that must be 90 to 95 percent of people in all history, unless there was a revival somewhere. 
90 to 95 percent of those people who are walking around and died in their sin are now crying out from hell, from Hades, please don't come to this place. And you mock. You walk around in your pride and think you're above it all. Are you young people ready? Are you, are you prepared for Judgment Day? Leave you alone? Why? If you're under God's wrath, why would I leave you alone? I don't want to leave you alone, man. I don't want you to go to hell. What's that? I can talk to anybody who I, I want to. You're on a public campus. Is that the best you can do? Fecal matter? You can't, you're in college now. Let's try using college level language. Yes, that would be fecal matter. Not S-H-I-T. Watch your filthy mouth. I didn't think you'd be reasonable. Why won't you engage your brain? Use your mind. Start thinking about what you're doing. You're in danger, man. Yes, you are in danger. How do you know you're saved? How do you know you're saved? Oh, I sure can. How do you know you're saved? I, so you repented and everything. Are you still living in sin? Are you still living in sin? Your mouth is unrepentant. Your mouth is filthy and disgusting. Pull up your pants already. You admit, God bless you, sinner. I don't want you to go to hell, man. You know, at least I love you enough to warn you about the truth. Apparently your pastor is not warning you or training you about the way you should speak. <coughs> and Jesus said that. Out of, out, you know, out of the heart, the mouth speaks. So don't talk to me about this. Why not? If you're a Christian, why can't I talk to you about spiritual things on this campus? If you're actually a Christian, why can't I talk to you about these things? God's commanded us to talk about it. Make it public. Publish it. Publish the gospel. Fear God and worship Him, the Bible says. Fear God? That's what it says. Fear God and worship Him that made the heavens and the earth. Do you fear God? No, I don't fear God. Why not? Do you fear God, sir? Me? Yeah. I fear a God, yes. I'm an agnostic. And I which which God do you... Are oh, you not sure which God you fear? But I'm very, very open to everybody's religion. I'm not judgmental. You don't judge anything? No, sir. How do you know you're going to get the right God then? Why does it matter what God I believe in? Well, if the living God of the Bible, now this God. Like, I'm an individual though. Like, it's okay that you're preaching to me. I don't let, let, me let me why. finish my statement. I wanted to address what you said, okay? So, this living God of the Bible says you can't have any other gods besides me. It's the first commandment. But I, haven't, but I don't claim Christianity though. I didn't say you did. I understand you're agnostic. I, I understand that term. Well, because you don't believe in him as God, you're condemned. Okay, that's fine. It's not fine. It's fine with me. No, it won't be fine on Judgment Day. <laughs> it's not here yet. Oh, but it's coming. Are you going to die? Of course. Everybody Hebrews nine twenty seven already gave it to you. It's appointed once to die, and then judgment. It won't be funny on that day, young man. You could die tomorrow. Oh, yeah, and I lived a very, very good life. Sir. No, you oh, didn't. If you're denying Christ, you lived a very, very bad life. No, I'm not. Yes. Fine. Yes. Let us hear the conclusion of the matter. Ecclesiastes 12, 13, and 14. Worship God and serve Him is the whole duty of man. See, that's not your duty. Your duty is to serve yourself. They put you on the hot seat and you're out of here, huh? Can't stand one question. How come? But you're not abiding in the conclusion. You're not doing the conclusion. You're running away from the conclusion. You're wanting, running away from the truth of the Bible. Yes. Why is it that darkness hates the light so much? Because the light exposes the problem. Say again? I'm speaking about the light of Christ, sir. The light of Christ exposes sin. The light of the Holy Spirit exposes the truth about the way you're thinking and the way you're living.
What do you believe? You're looking at me, I can't tell you. Well, either one of you guys with the hats on. I'll be the no hat. Okay. The guy with the no hat then, what do you believe? I'm still, I'm still trying to figure that out right now. Well, you better figure it out quick, young man. When's Judgment Day? When God comes? Yeah. Do you know when that is? Um. No, okay. Okay, okay. I, I okay. can narrow it down, but, but you probably won't believe it anyway, so. You probably won't. Yeah, but the Bible says he'll come as a thief in the night. And let me let me uh, kind of kind of restate what I, I just said about when he comes. So he, he's going to come and establish his, his millennial kingdom, and then Judgment Day will be after that. So Judgment Day will be after the millennial rule of Christ. A thousand years, Christ will reign, rule and reign with an iron fist. The Bible says the nations will submit to him. Right. <laughs> But we're not talking about that day. You don't want to wait until Judgment Day. You need to receive mercy right now. Mercy is received today. Today is the day of salvation, the Bible says. Not tomorrow. You don't know you have tomorrow. Well, let's just say that when I was mostly religious, I was Catholic. Okay. Well, I was born into the Roman Catholic tradition, but that didn't make me born again of the Holy Spirit. I wasn't born again the Holy Spirit until I, I confessed my question. sin. To, what's that? I was just answering your question. I understand. I'm just trying to interact with your answer. Okay. So I, I was born again of the Holy Spirit 15 years ago. Yeah. Right? So Jesus Christ said in John 3, you must be born again of the Holy Spirit. But you will not inherit the kingdom of God. There's a great inheritance in the kingdom. Nobody deserves that. I don't deserve that. I don't deserve God's kingdom to be part, uh, considered an adopted son. Time to up, be. Please. To be adopted into his kingdom. But uh, he gives it to me because he's gracious and he's good, merciful. He's willing to give that to you as well. I'm not trying to bribe you into the kingdom. But the truth of the matter is God will bless you if you'll submit to him. But you must humble yourself first. You must confess your sin and then intend never to do them again. And be born again the Holy Spirit. If you don't have that, you're in trouble. And if you die in this condition, you're old enough, you're an adult now, you're old enough to be condemned by God. No doubt about it. All of you young people here at this college, you're not kids anymore. You're adults. You're adults. And so God's going to hold you accountable for the knowledge you have. And you have enough knowledge by the Ten Commandments written on your heart, the law written on your heart, conscience, uh, uh, the conscience which is there as well, the creation which God created uh, is all around you. It's physical evidence, empirical evidence right now, natural evidence. And yet most of you hypothesize that God uh, didn't make the world this way if God existed at all. It's just a fairy tale. Repent. Change your mind. Change your thinking. Believe Christ. Obey Christ. Amen. Are we going to join? Well, we have it till five, but we don't have to stay till five. Yeah. It's kind of cold, so. Yeah. You want to wrap it up? You want to go one more time? Or? Yeah, I'm all done. That's my last plea for you here at the, at the campus. And we're going to wrap it up for the day. We appreciate your hospitality here. Thank you. I plead with you to confess and forsake your sin. Surrender your life to Jesus Christ today. He's worthy of your life your heart, mind, strength, and soul. And this is the first demand of God. That you must love Him with everything you are. Seek God, and He'll draw near to you. Get your Bibles, read the New Testament, and find out what Christ said. Ask the Lord to teach you what it means. You seek all this worldly wisdom here, but will you seek wisdom from above, from Christ? Amen.